members of the dais principal garu and uh, devula palli garu and uh, friends and students here i'm extremely interested because i would get to see some innovations and thinking of a generation which came after me and uh, i thought i'll really see some very very good ideas but uh, ideas are very very cheap knowledge today has been very very cheap when we were growing up knowledge was everything but today two other things have become much more important more important than knowledge is communication and implementation what they called in the startup world execution 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 if you are not able to execute your idea it's worth nothing my core business has been research and innovations in fact i was just introduced as being uh, uh, my career included uh, managing director ceo of i was introduced as general electric and of wipro it's not the big wipro it's one of the wipro companies i was one of the smaller wipro companies i was a managing director and ceo it's not the general electric corporation of united states that i was the managing director ceo that is somebody a demigod like jack welch but uh, i was a ceo and managing director for a smaller general electric company called uh, gems it g medical systems it and in both these i didn't grow up uh, in these companies and and climbed up the ladder and became a ceo in both these companies the way i became a ceo was i ran a small company called citadel and citadel's primary business is research and innovation and uh, that's where we learned that ideas have no value in fact the beggar on the street has more ideas than all of us put together because he is all day to have ideas but he cannot execute and in citadel we had ideas and we could ex uh, implement them and uh, take them to market so it's idea prototyping implementation and take them to market the last three are the much more important factors we could do several of these projects and uh, one of them wipro bought it over and asked me to head that company the other one general electric bought over and asked me to head that company that's why i ended up being the ceos of both these companies at different point of time one of the key things we need to say i started out saying that knowledge is cheap do you agree with me because of mobile phones because of google knowledge is very very cheap to get the same knowledge we had to go through tons of textbooks libraries and hope we had a good faculty member but now you could get any piece of knowledge anyway through your google search and your mobile phones and uh, not only it's accessible it's accessible to everybody it's accessible to a student who's better than you who's accessible to a student who's going to a institute which is not as good as yours it's as it knowledge has become democratized so we have to compete not on knowledge we have to compete on our ability to execute we cannot compete on our ideas as well because everybody has ideas one of the things that we have not been doing very well is innovation in our generation but i'm very happy in this generation there are a lot of startups lot of innovative ideas putting into implementation and uh, the gap between between theory and practice has been growing because of lack of practical experience up till now unless those who are practically involved in projects your final year projects and uh, i would say these startups and ideas are extensions of your final year projects the gap between innovation and theory has become wider so the quality of engineers in our country also has become very very wide there are some extremely good engineers there are some extremely good institutions and college and there are some very 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 poor quality of engineers in our country the reason of course is uh, you know till recently we had 700 engineering colleges just in both the states of andhra pradesh and telangana and i always congratulate jntu and uh, uh, the present government of closing down substandard colleges and i think that actually helped 
lot of students by closing down substandard colleges. So just to give an example, the quality of engineering that has come down and uh, the ability or the inability of the students to understand even fundamental con uh, concepts. I'm an electrical engineer and so far in my career I interviewed more than, more than 3,000 electrical engineers and uh, the simple question I ask them is uh, whether what is V equals IR, everyone says that voltage equals current and resistance. But when you ask them if current is the cause of voltage or voltage is the cause of current, which is the most simple thing, more than 90% do not know. I mean, statistically, that's impossible because uh, even if you take random, it's got to be 50-50. But the actual question is, is it because of voltage and current there's resistance? Is it because of current and uh, resistance there's voltage? So that there are about nine or 10 possible questions. Most of them get it wrong. It can't get any simpler than that. And uh, that is really the quality of education. We get our answers right, but we don't understand the uh, fundamental concepts before. So it's only when we apply them in practice, we get to we get to understand the reality. And how do you apply them in practice? through projects and your own startup companies. The, the knowledge uh, which is freely available, but you want to translate these innovations into value. Never before in human history that we have given so much importance to innovation and design. Never ever before in human history we have done that. Even my generation, even my, uh, my uncle, we used to go shopping. And when you go for shopping for anything, whether it's furniture or a coat hanger or anything, or a utensil in the kitchen, he used to see how heavy that was, if it's a utensil in the kitchen, and what the quality was. So if you take a, any of the item, let's say 50 years ago, if the cost of the item was this much, the raw material cost was about 80% of that, 80 or 90% of it. Close to the 10% is the cost of the labor for manufacturing, and there's no value in design. But uh, today, if you take any product, so for example, if you take a utensil, the cost of steel or copper that goes into it, if the utensil costs 200 rupees, 180 rupees was the cost of the material, raw material that went into it. Another 10, 20 rupees was cost of the labor and electricity used for manufacturing, and there was hardly any price for design. But if you take any product, whether it's a pen, or whether it's a cell phone, or whether this mic I'm speaking in, the cost of the raw material of this, this mic may cost 1,000 rupees, but the cost of the raw material is 10 rupees, but the cost of innovation and design is the rest of it. But more dramatically is what we have in this thing. The entire cost of the plastic, the stainless steel, the steel, the copper, and a few micrograms of gold that goes into it, all this costs less than 300 rupees or 400 rupees. And the silicon, of course. The manufacturing cost, the actual human labor and the manufacturing cost will be another 1,000 rupees. But if this phone costs 20,000 rupees, the balance Balance 19,000 rupees is the cost of innovation and design. So never in the history of human uh, engineering that uh, the value of ideas, transforming ideas, the value of innovation and design has been so high. And that is why this particular tech fest is very, very important. Now, when we talk about innovation design, are we just talking about these high-tech gadgets, uh, cell phones and drones and things like that? No, I think there's great opportunity in understanding social problems and solving that. The city of Hyderabad, we're always proud that the, the Mars lander was by and large developed in Hyderabad with all these DRDOs. So we managed to put a lander on Mars, but uh, we have not been able to solve simple social problems. India imports about uh, 56,000 crores worth of uh, LPG, 
liquid petroleum gas and uh, even poorest of the poor villages pay few lakhs every month all the way to the richest country. But uh, we have not been able to develop our own biogas systems in India. We can actually generate, all of you know, biogas from village waste, agriculture waste, uh, animal waste, human waste. Every village can produce its own biogas, saving the country up, up to 56,000 crores. But so far, although we put a lander on Mars, none of the scientists in India have gone together and did a low-hanging fruit called a multi-feedstock biogas system, which is a biogas which works on cow dung, which works on municipal waste, which works on uh, agriculture waste, and human waste, seamage. So these are some of the social problems. And it's not just for you know, solving social problems. It's also great, great business. And they are, now students such as you are beginning to look at these social problems. There's, uh, recently I was talking, uh, looking at a startup. They, uh, they started out with a solar dryer. All these temples, mosques, there's a lot of flowers there. And then they, uh, he took those flowers from, they're actually littering the temples. They throw, throw them outside the temples. And in rainy season, it becomes a sanitation issue. And uh, he's taken this temple, or the group of students, engineering students, are collecting, going all to temples and mosques and collecting these flowers and uh, converting them into dried flowers, which are used for pot puri and export, uh, exporting it to Europe. He's also converting some of them into perfumes and some of them into uh, agarbati sticks. So there are a lot of social problems one can focus on. They need not be high tech, but they are, they are more important for the nation than some of the high tech projects that we are doing. So another extremely important thing is in the past, low quality products were cheap to manufacture or cheap to build, and high quality products were more expensive. But uh, India is known for low quality. And actually, to build a low quality product or a service, it's much more expensive. Take, for example, uh, a building, or take, for example, a service, a medical service, but uh, if you keep doing poor quality things, you have to keep up the repairs, you use more materials, and uh, you end up with higher costs. So a lot of things, whether it's infrastructure building or service that we are being provided, the quality is actually increasing to the cost of the uh, nation. And I think that is one more extremely important area that we need to focus on, the quality of product, the quality of design, and the quality of service.